Let us try to understand the scientific meaning of the word work because there is slight difference between the layman's language word work and scientific meaning of work. When do we say that work is being done on an, any object? For understanding this, we will have to understand that when force is applied on any object and that object displaces under the effect of that force, that means it changes its position, then we say that work is being done on that object due to that force. On what factors does the magnitude of this work depend? The magnitude of this work depends on both, that is, magnitude of force and the magnitude of displacement that has taken place under the effect of that force. Now, first of all, we will try to understand work by taking some examples. When a block, as you saw, is placed on a horizontal surface, is being pushed, then it moves, it displaces under the effect of that force. So, we can say that the work is being done on that horizon, on that block which is kept, you know, on the horizontal surface. Similarly, a toy car which is being pulled by a child. So, in case number one, it was pushing. In case number two, we are now pulling it. So, the child when pulls that toy car, the toy car under the effect of that force undergoes displacement. So, we can say that work is being done on that toy car. Similarly, an object which is lying on the zero reference level, that means it is lying, supposing, say, on ground. And then we lift it up. Now, some work will have to be done in order to lift it up. So, we say that work is being done on that object which is being lifted up. Let us try to understand work mathematically. That means derive the formula for work. Work is nothing but the product of the force that is being applied. So, the magnitude of force and under the effect of that force, the object is going to displace. So, it also is a product of along with the force, it is a magnitude of displacement of the body. If we represent the work by say W, force by F and displacement by S, then we can say that work done W will be equal to F into S. What could be unit of work? As we know that in W is equal to F into S, F stands for force and what is the unit of force? Newton. S stands for displacement and the unit is meter and therefore the unit of work will be Newton meter. But after the name of scientist Joule, we say that the unit of work is Joule. What is one Joule work? When one Newton force is applied on any object and under the effect of that force, if the object displaces by one meter, then the work done on that object will be considered as one joule. So, we define that the amount of work done to displace an object by one meter in the direction of the force of one newton, then we say that one joule work is being done on that object. How do we calculate work in different cases? Supposing there is no displacement even after applying force. Now, this is a wonderful thing. Let us try to understand one example. You apply force on a wall. That means lots of force is applied. You push, try to push that wall. But do you think that the wall is going to move? Obviously, no. That means even if force is applied, there is no displacement. So, in the case of no displacement, the value of S would be 0. Now, we know that formula for work is F into S. Substituting the value of S as 0, so work done will be equal to 0. So, when there is no displacement, even on applying force, the work done will be 0. Supposing the displacement takes place in the direction of the force, means supposing a pen is lying on the bench and you push that bench, a pen and then 
the pen displaces under the effect of the force along the direction of the force. Then we say that displacement when it is in the direction of the force W will be equal to F into S. That means in this case the work done on that object will be equal to positive value. That means its magnitude will be positive. If the displacement is exactly in the direction opposite to that of the force. Now this is what we say that the force in this condition would be frictional force. That means the displacement will be exactly in the direction opposite to that of the force. So W will be refer referred as minus F multiplied by S. So in this case the work done will be negative and the force which is acting along this direction will be called as frictional force. So we saw that how do we calculate force when it is the, uh, the displacement, there is no displacement or else the displacement is along the direction of the force or else the displacement is opposite to that of the force. But if the displacement and the force are at some angle, then first of all we need to understand the component of the force. When the force and displacement are at some angle, then how do we find out the component of the force? First of all, depending upon the magnitude of the force, we draw a line segment OC whose length will be equal to magnitude of the displacement S. Then we draw a line segment OA whose magnitude, whose length will depend upon the magnitude of the force and also OA will be at an angle, whatever the angle between the force and the displacement. In this case, as represented in the figure, the force and displacement are mutually at an angle of theta. From point A, then we will drop a perpendicular on OC. We obtain point B. OB would represent the effective force. What we call it as the component of the force. Let us call it as F1. So in this case, F1 is called component of the force. Remember, whenever force is applied and the displacement takes place at an angle, then not all the amount of force is utilized in converting it into work. Only a part of that which we call it as the component of the force or in a simple language the effective force will be useful. So in this case effective force is F1 and the direction of that force would be along the direction of the displacement. Now we can obtain the general formula for work. So W is equal to F1 into S where F1 is what? component of the force in the direction of the displacement. And as you know, S is nothing but the value of displacement. So, now we define work in more general sense. That work is done when the force is applied on any object. And that work will be equal to the product of the magnitude of the displacement during the time period when the force is obviously been applied. And the magnitude of component of the force in the direction of the displacement. So this is how we define the general formula for work. Now let us calculate the work when the direction of force and displacement are mutually perpendicular. That means let us consider uniform circular motion. An object which is performing uniform circular motion is being acted upon by centripetal force and that centripetal force will be in the direction towards the center of the circle and at every point on that circular path the direction of the displacement will be perpendicular to the centripetal force as represented over here in the figure. Now there is no change in the speed that means the speed does not change. And because that means the centripetal force does no work on that object. So, whenever the direction of displacement and the direction of force are perpendicular, what amount of work is being done by that force? Then the work done by that force will be zero. Let us calculate 
sums of work. As you can see, the mass of the object given over here, M, is nothing but 15 kg. Whereas, the acceleration, in this case, that will be equal to G, and as given over here, we take it as 10 meter per second square. And the displacement, S is 40 meter. How do we calculate work? So, work W, as we know, it is nothing but F multiplied by S. So, W, in this case, F, as you know, according to second law, is mass into acceleration into S. Why? Because according to second law, F is equal to M into A. Therefore, the value of A is G, that is 10. Value of M is 15. Value of A, that is G, is 10. And value of S, that is 440. So finally, we get W is equal to 6000. Do not forget to mention the unit, that is Joule. Next sum, here we are given that the mass of the object is 120 gram. So, we will have to first of all convert that 120 gram into kilogram because the unit should be in SI units. So, 120 upon 1000 because you know that 1 gram is equal to 1 upon 1000 kg. So, that is 0 0.120 kg. Acceleration over here is once again A will be equal to minus G that is minus 10 meter per second square. Why do you think that is minus G? Because as we know that the object is taken vertically upwards. Displacement as given over here S is 5 meter. So work done W as we know that is F into S and S F is equal to M into A, so M into A into S. Substituting the values, that is M as it is, instead of A, minus G, and next one would be S. Substituting the values, that is 0 0.120 multiplied by minus 10 multiplied by 5. And that is nothing but minus 6 J. Remember, here the force is in the opposite direction that is vertically upwards and because of that reason we are getting work as negative that is minus 6. Energy. Now in order to exert force we require energy. What is the meaning of the word energy? The ability to do work is called energy. In fact to do work energy is necessary. In fact uh, to do work Force is necessary and for force energy is required. For example, if you wind up, if you want to wind up the spring of a toy or a clock, then that key has to be rotated. And that for that particular reason you require force. In order to exert that force, you require energy. From where do we obtain that energy? Obviously we use our muscular energy in order to rotate that particular key. And from where do we obtain this muscular energy? The food that we eat. That means you can never ever separate force, work and energy. They are always interrelated to each other.